Hey everybody, today I'm going to take a look at this pretty recently released Namco Classics Volume 1 uh, joystick plug and play by MSI. But first I want to look at the packaging really quick. It is nice and colorful. Interesting, there's no security ta uh, tape on the tabs, which I found kind of interesting. And also the back, it talks about arcade at home, arcade controls, genuine arcade feel, but it doesn't say anything about genuine arcade graphics. We'll see why in just a minute. So here is the actual plug and play itself. It's just like the other MSI ones. You got this oversized joystick. I do hear micro switches, so that's a good sign, but the joystick does feel a little cheap. Oversized buttons, a decent sticker. It's nice and colorful. Start button to uh, start and pause games. Reset to go back to the main menu. It does not have a select button. Uh, so if this has a game on it that used a select button for a cheat code, you're not going to be able to pull it off. On off switch, turn it on and Pac-Man gets a glowing zit. How awesome. So it does work. It runs on three AA batteries. Uses your standard RCA audio video cables. Uh, with the mono audio, which most TVs have in the back. Some newer TVs do not have them. They just have HDMI. So if that's the case, you're not really going to be able to hook it up without some sort of a converter. Uh, you can also plug it into like old uh, VCRs and sometimes use an old VCR as a pass-through. So let's go ahead and take the Namco Classics Volume 1 plug and play. Let's plug it in my TV and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the games. The Namco Classics Volume 1 Plug and Play was made by MSI and came out late in 2018. Just like their previous plug and plays I reviewed, this unit does not contain arcade versions of the games, but rather NES versions. However, this time they actually have more than one game. Shocker, I know. Now we have three games accessed by a simple menu. The first game is Dig Dug 2. In it, not only can you use an air hose with the A button to horrifically inflate and explode your enemies, but you can also drill holes with the B button in the earth to create cracks that can lead to portions of land falling into the water, sometimes drowning your enemies and sometimes drowning yourself if you're not careful. I'm a big fan of the original Dig Dug, but its sequel is a pretty big departure and I don't find it that entertaining. The second game is The Tower of Juaga, which is based on a Famicom version since it never made it stateside on the NES. This game takes the maze genre and adds a little bit of fantasy RPG action elements to it. Holding down A puts your sword out to attack enemies. However, releasing the A button will put your shield up to protect you from some long range attacks. The main goal of each floor is to find a key to unlock the door, but as you play, you can also discover treasure chests containing items that can help or hurt you, and some items are necessary to complete the game, but unless you have a guide, you may not know how to find them or use them. The game also moves rather slow for my personal taste. The third and final game is Pac-Mania. This game puts Pac-Man in a more isometric 3D style maze. You can now press the button to jump over ghosts, but some of them can jump as well. This is the best game on the system, although the joystick didn't always respond to my turns, which is a bummer in a maze game requiring quick turns. My guess is that the game would play better with a traditional D-pad. Graphically speaking, you're getting NES graphics along with NES sounds and music. Family friendly wise, the box says the game is recommended for ages 5 and up. Currently, this carries a retail price of about $20. So what do I think of the Namco Classics Volume 1 Plug and Play by MSI? Well, first let me say that I'm glad MSI finally is putting more than one game on a plug and play, but three NES games really isn't a lot for $20. Just to put this thing in perspective, when the original Jack Pacific Namco TV Games plug and play came out over 15 years ago, which by the way I reviewed in episode 257, it had five games on it that tried to emulate the arcade versions rather than the inferior NES ports. I'm also perplexed and let down by the game selection itself. You would expect the first volume to have some of the all-time great Namco arcade games, like Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Galaga, and Xevious, all of which have NES ports that they could have used. They could have even got the Famicom version of the original Dig Dug, which never came out in the US. But instead, we have an inferior sequel in Dig Dug 2, an obscure choice in Tower of Juwaga, 
and one of the lesser known Pac-Man games, Pac-Mania. I will say that the first two games controlled well, and Pac-Mania was enjoyable despite the joystick not being perfect for it. The system instructions also needed some editing, as they talked about the upper and lower screens in Druaga, most likely because the writer copied the instructions from a version that appeared on the Nintendo DS, and they misspelled the word shield, replacing the D with an F, turning shield into shield which at least gave me a chuckle. <laughs> I mean, shield, come on. So in the end, while I'm glad it has more than one game and I could play Pac-Mania some more, I'm still overall disappointed with it. So where am I going to rank the MSI Namco Classics Volume 1 Plug and Play? I'm looking in the 30s. I do like the Sega Nano Columns Plug and Play more at 32, but I will put this over the cool looking but somewhat hard to use Atari Keychain Plug and Play at 33. So out of the 41 Plug and Plays I've now ranked, the Namco Classics Volume 1 Plug and Play is entering at the 33 position. It's great that MSI is starting to add more games to their Plug and Plays, but they still have a ways to go. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. Check out some of my many other videos and sign up at patreon.com slash nosweargamer, just like Michael M. did, to support the show and gain access to exclusive perks. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Noswear Gamer. Take care, everybody.